Hello and thanks for joining me. My name is Ilya and today we are going to see how to implement Rails internationalization step by step. And in this video we are going to cover the following topics. Setting up I18N, working with the translation files, translating models, performing pluralization and localizing date and time. I'm going to start by generating a new Rails application. For this demo I'm using Rails 6.0.2, but most of the concepts can be applied to older versions as well. Next we are going to generate a new controller with an index action, and let's tweak the generated view by adding some sample content. And then I would like to generate a feedback page so that the users can share their opinion of our website. We are going to be interested in two actions, new and create. So let's tweak the new action to fetch all reviews from the database and order them by creation date. Also, I would like to redirect the user to the feedback page when the form is processed and the record is persisted. Next, let's render the feedbacks collection on the new page and create a partial for an individual feedback, which is going to display the time when the feedback was created, who created it and the contents. Next, let's take care of the routes. And after that, I would like to add a global menu to our layout. After that, you can run your migrations and boot up your server. Next, just navigate to localhost port 3000 and make sure that everything is working fine. The next step is deciding which languages we are going to support in our application, and you can choose any, but I'm going to stick with Russian and English, and English is going to be set as the default one, so open config application rb file and add the following lines. Next, I would like to hook up a Rails i18m gem. This gem provides locale data for a vast array of different languages. So it has translated names for month, it has pluralization rules and other stuff. Now let's see how to store translations for your website. We are going to utilize uh, special YAML files, which are stored under the config locales directory. So let's replace the sample data with a welcoming message. And also let's create an ru.yaml file for Russian translations and also provide a welcoming message here. So as you can see, we are using a key value format and so the key is going to be used inside our code and this key will be replaced with its value based on the currently set locale. Alright, so let's use the key in our index view now. I'm going to say t welcome. So this t is a special method to actually translate something based on the provided key and so this key here is going to be replaced with its translation once the page is rendered. Next, let's take care of the second message in this view. I'm going to create a key called services HTML, and this HTML postfix is used to properly display the EM tag, because if you do not provide the HTML postfix, then all your HTML markup is going to be displayed as a plain text. So that's quite important. Uh, now we can use our services HTML key inside our view. Now let's stop for a second and talk a bit more about these keys. Uh, suppose we have not two but maybe 500 keys. If all our keys are stored right under this EN or RU key, 
without any grouping, then we are going to end up with at least two problems. So first of all, we would need to make sure that all keys have unique names, and also it is going to be hard to locate all the related translations. And so it is a really good idea to actually group your translations under uh, some keys. So for instance, we may say static pages, then inside index, and inside this index we are going to have our translation keys. Now we can return to the view and uh, rename the keys here as well, but as you can see, the names of these keys become quite long. Well, it's not really convenient, but luckily we have a lazy lookup. So if you are performing translations inside a view or inside a controller and your translation keys are namespaced properly following the folder structure, then you can omit the namespaces. So you can simply say dot welcome. Next we can translate our global menu and uh, use some namespace here as well for our convenience. And, well, in this case we cannot take advantage of the lazy lookup, so let's provide the full name for our key. Now let's proceed to the feedback page and take care of this form. So we need to translate these labels. And, well, Rails allows us to provide translations for the modal attributes, and they will be utilized automatically. Uh, you need to namespace these translations properly as well, so we should say active record, then attributes, and then the name of your model, which is feedback, so the name should be in singular form. And then under the name of your model, you should provide the actual attributes that you would like to translate. Now the labels will be translated automatically for you. And well, as for the submit button, you can also provide translation for the modal name itself. To do so, you should say active record models feedback. But honestly, I do not like this great feedback text on this button. So let's stick with a generic submit word. And uh, well, I'm going to use the global namespace and provide forms submit here. Next, let's utilize this translation and the form is taken care of. The next step is to take care of our validations because I do not want my visitors to post empty feedbacks and therefore let's provide some simple validation rules. But the question is how do we uh, translate the corresponding error messages? But well, it appears that we don't need to do anything because of the Rails i18 gem that we have already installed takes care of that, so it knows how to translate common errors. One problem, however, is that our form contains the subtitle which says, uh, well, some errors prohibited this feedback from being saved. And this message is not translated, so let's take care of that. And as long as there can be one or more errors, then this error word should be pluralized accordingly. And as you know, in English, words are usually pluralized by adding an S postfix, but for Russian language things are somewhat more complex. So let's create a namespace called messages under forms, then there is going to be errors, and I'm going to provide two cases for the English language, that is one error message and, well, many error messages. So this count part here is interpolation and it is going to be replaced with an actual number. And next we can take care of the Russian locale, which has four 
potential cases. And once you are done, you can utilize your new translations inside your form. And note that we are providing the count value here. And this count is going to be used to properly pluralize your error message. The next stop is the feedback partial, because here we need to localize this posted by string and the date time. So as for the posted by, we are going to utilize interpolation. I'm going to just say feedback posted by. The author here is going to be an interpolated value. But what about the date time, the created at attribute? So to take care of that attribute, we can take advantage of the localize method, which is allized as just L. So this method is going to produce a translation version of the date and it is going to use uh, the data provided by i18n rails gem so here i would like to utilize a predefined format that is called long but well there are some other available formats or you create your own format so now our application is fully translated but there is quite an important thing missing we cannot change the locale. So let's fix it now and stick uh, with the following approach. So our URLs are going to have an optional uh, locale. So first of all, let's tweak the routes RB file. Here I would like to include a scope with an optional uh, param. Next, we should set a before action inside the application controller where we are going to check if the locale is set. So if it's not set, we are going to just use the default locale. And if there is some locale set, then we should check if this locale is supported or not. And also the next thing is to provide the default URL options method here. It's a special method for Rails and it is going to include the locale parameter into every link which we generate with Rails helpers. And the last thing to do is to present links to actually switch between your locales. We are doing that inside our layout. Also, we may uh, translate uh, this new feedback title. To do that, we can just uh, use uh, this new namespace and provide title right here for English and for Russian. And after that, utilize this title key by taking advantage of lazy loading. And so this is it. We have just uh, translated our application and we have added an ability to switch between languages. So now our users have two languages to choose from, which is really great. This tutorial is also available at Localize, so you can read it there. And that's all for today, folks. I thank you for staying with me and until the next time.